this video, you will learn how to use some of the many different features of SciFinder M to find the information you will need in your chemistry courses. The best way to access SciFinder M is through your Chemistry Resources Research Guide, which you can get to from the Rue Library homepage. In the Research Guide, click on the Search for Sources tab, and then select the SciFinder M link. Remember, you will first need to create an account while connected to the campus internet using your campus MOX email. This is necessary for CAS to verify that you have valid access to the resource. Once you have created an account, you may access the SciFinder M database. Sign in to SciFinder M. From the home screen, you will be able to perform a number of different searches. First, let's assume we are looking for articles. For this, we'll need to do a References search. Click the References link above the search bars. In this example, let's search for COVID-19. In your results, you can limit by the type of document you want to read. Let's say we want to see what clinical trials have been undertaken. So, we'll click View All, and then select the Clinical Trials option. I'll limit my search to articles in English. Notice the number of results we now have. I can sort these results by a few different options using the Sort drop-down menu at the top of the list of results. Times cited means how many other studies have cited the article in new research. This can often be an indication of how important an article is. The more citations, the more important it may be. Sorting by publication date will put the most recent articles at the top or the bottom, depending on which option you choose. I'll go ahead and sort by Times Cited. Now, let's take a look at the information we can see about an article. In the information on the article, you can see a button that tells you how many times an article has been cited. Notice the number of times this article has been cited. Clearly, the article has had a large impact in the research community. Let's go ahead and open this first article. You can look at the publication information by clicking on View More. We can see that this article comes from the New England Journal of Medicine. We also have information on all of the authors of the article, as well as a detailed abstract that describes the article and the author's findings. Notice, too, that when it is available, information on the substances studied in the article can be seen. At the bottom of this page, links to the references the article cites can be seen by clicking to open cited documents. Back at the top of the page, if you want to look at the article, you will click the full text button. Then, select the get full text from FSC link. If we have full text access to the article through our subscriptions, this will take us to the databases here at FSC that provide us with the full text. Now, let's return to our results for our search of COVID-19 clinical trials in SciFinder and look at a couple of tools that SciFinder provides. Navigate to the Article Records page, then click the Return to Results link. 
let's say I want to be able to look at these articles at a later time. I can click the bookmark button, select the save and alert option, and then set my parameters. No alerts means that you can just log back into SciFinder N later and go to your saved items to rerun the search. If you want to receive alerts when something new is published, toggle the alert option and choose your alert parameters. SciFinder M will send you an email message when the new articles that meet your criteria are published on the time schedule you choose. This can be helpful if you need to stay up to date with new research being done in a given area. Give the search a name and click Save. To get back to your saved search, you will click on the bell button at the top of the screen and then navigate to your saved items. Click the Rerun Search button and you will again receive the results of the search you ran with the parameters specified. If anything new has been published since you first ran the search, those articles will now show up in your results. You also have the option to save a single article if you would like to do that. Navigate back to the results page. Open the information for the article you would like to save by clicking on its title. Then, select the bookmark button and save result. Give it a name that you will remember and use any tags you need to organize your saved articles. Once again, to get back to the article, click the bell button at the top of the page, navigate to your saved items, find the article, and then click the title to open the article. Back at the results page, you'll see that you can also download either the whole search or just selected results as a PDF file. Click the download button, choose the options you want, give it a name you will recognize, then click download. This may take some time, depending on how many results you are saving. Finally, you can also share your results with your professor or your teammates. Once more, select the bookmark button and then select the share results option and enter the email information. Those are the basics of searching for references in SciFinder. Let's return to the home page. As you can see, there are multiple ways to search in SciFinder N. You have the references search, which we just completed, but you can also search by substances, by reactions, and by adding an advanced search field where you can search by author or any of these other search options. For now, I want to show you how to use the structure editor to draw a molecule and then search for information on that molecule. Click the draw button over here to the right of the search box. It may look intimidating at first, but it is actually quite easy to use. On the left, you have a number of different tools. On the right, you have different ring and bond templates, as well as the common atoms that you may want to employ. I'm going to demonstrate how to draw a molecule using these different tools. First, I need to draw a benzene ring, so I select that over here on the right, move my cursor to the editor pane, and click to drop the ring. Now, I want my double bonds to be in a different position, so I select the pencil tool on the left, mouse over an existing double bond on the ring until it is highlighted, then click to remove that double bond. I will do this with each existing double bond. Then 
I will click on the sides where I want to create new double bonds. Next, I want to add a chain, so I select the chain tool from the left and move my mouse over the ring until the node I want is highlighted. I'll click and draw the chain. I need another segment, so I'll move the mouse to the end of the first chain, click, and draw the next segment. I also need a single line coming off the end, so I'll select my pencil tool from the left, move over the end of the chain until the node is highlighted, and draw my final line. Since I need to add a couple more lines, I'll keep my pencil tool, select the appropriate nodes, and draw my lines. If I needed to, I could make any of these double or triple or stereo bonds by clicking the appropriate line until I have the bond I want. But for this molecule, I just want single bonds. Now I need to add some atoms. The default is carbon, so if I need to add a different atom, I can choose it from the provided elements. I need to add oxygen, so from the right, I'll select that, mouse over the molecule until the correct node is highlighted, and click. If I need an atom that isn't on this list, I can go to the toolbar on the left and click the Atom button, which opens the periodic table from which I can select the correct atom. From this drawing, though, I need to add some OH molecules. For this, I need to find the Shortcut button on the left and then select the correct molecule. I again mouse over the diagram until the correct nodes are highlighted and drop in the OH. Once it is drawn, I can save my molecule with the tools up at the top. This can be useful if you want to be able to import it into another search interface or if you want to be able to save it to import back into SciFinder for searching at a later time. Find the Export button and click it. Give the drawing a name you will remember, then choose your file type. For SciFinder, I'll save as a CXF file, and then export it by clicking the Download button. To search at a later date with the same molecule, you can select the Import tool, navigate to your molecule, and import it. Now, having drawn this molecule, I want to search for information on it. To do this, click OK. Notice the Draw button now says Edit, and you can see a pop-up window with your drawing. Click the Search button to get the substances. Look at the results to find the one that is closest to your molecule. I want to be able to take a look at the information available on this substance, so I'll click on it to open it up. Here we can see the CAS registry number and links for even more information. I'll click Get Substance Detail to get more information on physical properties, molecular weight, melting point, etc. I can also see what other names it is known by. Looking down the list, I see a common name, Mucinex. This is the stuff that helps clear your sinuses when you have a cold. Other information that you can see includes the spectra information. If you need this, open up the graphical representation of the spectrum you need, then click the download button to save the picture. This will download either a JPEG image or PDF to your downloads folder. Return to the Substance Detail page to get even more information, such as articles that have used this substance, 
by clicking the Get References button. And then limit your results to the role of the substance in the study that you want to look at. Back on the Substance Information page, you can view the Reactions equations by clicking the Get Reactions button at the top of the page. By clicking the Get Suppliers button, you can also check out what commercial sources there are for the substance, in case you should need to obtain some for your study. On this table, you can see the companies that make this substance available for study, the relative purity you can expect from the sample, how much it will cost, and how quickly you can expect it to ship. What we have discussed here is a basic introduction to some of the most important features of SciFinder N. The more time you spend exploring the search features and the structure editor, the more comfortable you will become. If you need any assistance with any of the features in SciFinder N, please don't hesitate to contact the chemistry librarian, Julie Hornick, at jhornick at flsouthern.edu.